It's fair to say that this pastel pencil review didn't go as I was expecting. I'm going to be reviewing the cheaper pastel pencil against the more expensive. So we have the Stabilo Carbothello and the Caran Dash. They're two well-known brands, but they sit on opposite ends of the market. And if you're a beginner, which one are you meant to be picking? Do you go with the cheapest or are you better buying something more expensive and improving faster? The thing is, there were quite a few surprises along the way. So in a minute, I'm just gonna tell you exactly what I thought of both the brands, but if you want to see me using them, then continue watching the video and you can see me create two of the same drawings using the different pencils and all of my thoughts as I went along. So. In quick review, the Stabilo Carbothello, which is much cheaper at about £1.80 at the time of recording, actually worked quite well. What I really liked about this pencil is the fact that it's fairly soft and can put down a fairly decent amount of pigment for the lighter tones. I actually used this recently for a cow portrait when I was struggling to get the white and light grey to show up well with my usual Faber-Castell pencil. So the Stabilo Carbothello is cheaper even than the Faber-Castell and yet actually it performed better in some instances. They sharpened up really well and were quite easy to sharpen up. So if you're a beginner, that is a big bonus. But one of the biggest flaws that I had and biggest problems I had when I was doing this pastel pencil review were the darker tones. Now I used a lamp black. They do also have a neutral black, which I didn't get, but the lamp black wasn't black at all, in my opinion. It kind of came out as a greeny color. And weirdly enough, when I used the Payne's gray, which is meant to be a dark gray next to it, the Payne's Grey looked darker than the black that I bought. So this was really bad and let down the overall pet portrait for this review quite a lot. I wouldn't personally rely on the darker tones, but I did find the lighter tones really good. Now, another great thing about the Stabilo Carbothello is that they sharpened up beautifully for details. Being that they are a softer pencil, they're not going to feel quite as familiar to you if you're new to pastel pencils. Something like the Faber-Castell, which is what I normally use, will feel a little bit more natural to you if you're not used to pastel pencils and perhaps just draw with a standard graphite or with a colored pencil because they're a harder brand but the Stabilo are again much cheaper and they did work quite well for details. Another thing that I really liked about the Stabilo was the fact that they blended into each other beautifully. So actually for an underpainting, I would definitely consider using the Stabilo Carbothello range if they had the right colors that I wanted. It would keep my costs a little bit lower, it makes the underpainting process a bit faster and I'm still getting the results that I want. It covered the page really beautifully. Now in this review, I'm not going into the technicalities of the amount of pigment and the light fastness. I'm purely looking at what they were like to work with. So if you want to know more about that, then of course you can find that out on the various different websites. The Caran Dash is a higher quality pencil than the Stabilo, but if you're just starting out, Stabilo is absolutely fine. And all over YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you will see plenty of professional artists using the Stabilo Carbothello range. I would say that the Carbothello pencil overall is a great bet if you're a beginner and it comes in nicely to a tight budget. Now, what about the Caran Dash? Well, okay, it did perform pretty well, but not quite as well as I was expecting. In comparison to the Stabilo, the darker tones and the blacks and the Payne's grey were so much better. They were really strong, absolutely beautiful, dark, rich black. However, and in this video, I will show you this, I actually then put a slight swab of the Faber-Castell Black, the 199, next to the Caran Dash pencil, which is about one pound, one pound 50 more per pencil, and they look pretty much identical. So as much as it was a win over the Stabilo, I can't say that it was necessarily worth that extra hike in price for me personally. However, just like the Stabilo, it filled in the card beautifully. So for the underpainting stage, it was an absolute dream. Again, the Caran Dash is a very soft pencil. I would say it's a little bit more buttery, whereas the Fa uh, sorry, the Stabilo Carbothello was more chalky. And that's only really what it felt like underhand to use it. However, I did actually come across a few hard nodules inside the Caran Dash. Obviously, it could have just been one or two bad pencils, but it's something to bear in mind. 
When it came to sharpening them up, they were again nice and easy to sharpen up. Sadly, one of my Caran d'Ache pencils was broken inside and I do use a few Caran d'Ache now and then. And I have to say this has become a theme for me is to find that the Caran d'Ache tend to be broken. I think because they're just so soft. Now, something that I actually just didn't like about these pencils was the fact that the diameter of the pencil was really quite thick. So for doing a pet portrait of this scale, which was roughly the size of my hand, so quite small, they weren't very useful. When it came to do the details, I found that they felt quite sloppy and it was very difficult to keep my pencil sharp because they were just so thick. That said, if you work on a larger scale and potentially do pet portraits at about an A3 size and bigger, then these pencils will be beautiful for that. Of course, they showed up fantastically well and the lighter tones, just like the Stabilo, shone out of the page. They worked beautifully, as you would expect for a pencil of this price. They also blended into each other really, really well. Overall, it's fair to say that the Caran d'Ache did a better job of this pet portrait, but for me, the only thing that really let down the Stabilo was the fact that the blacks were more like a grey. So let's see how these actually performed by having a look at the French Bulldog portrait I'm about to show you. For today's tutorial I'm using the grey Clairefontaine pastel matte paper and I'm using a reference photo from Julie Marsh on Unsplash which you can find linked below and this is a, a royalty free reference photo so if you want to try drawing this lovely little Frenchie then you can just head over to Unsplash to access that photo. Thank you very much Julie. So I'm starting off with the Carbothello 760. I believe this is the lamp black, but I will uh, alter that if that is a mistake. I'm really familiar with the uh, Faber-Castell pencils, so this learning a new set is kind of an odd thing for me. I'd say first off, it's putting down a nice amount of pastel. I know that the uh, Carbothello pencils are quite soft, which actually is a benefit to me. I really like having a soft pastel pencil for areas where it's going to be useful to help fill in the tooth of the card but the black is not absolute in the way that I would like it to be. I have also got the 770 so I had actually just made a start with the 760 because the pencil to me from the outside looks darker than the 770 but when I went and put a swab of the 770 down I actually found that this was darker so potentially a small con there in terms of the color on the outside on the wrapper of the pencil is a little bit misleading so I'm just heading back over the top. Um, I will have put on the screen exactly which these pencils are. I have a feeling this could actually be the Payne's Grey that I ordered and that the 760 might well be the Lamp Black but this is coming out darker. It's still nothing like the black that I would normally use from Faber-Castell um, which is a proper, I would say a proper black. This is coming out a bit purple which makes me think it's a Payne's Grey whereas the 760 came out a little bit um, chalky I would say. So for me that's not a great thing but they do have other blacks so potentially some of the other blacks might come out more like charcoal than these but so far it's got a nice coverage on the paper. It's nice and soft, which I've come to really admire about the Carbothello sets because a lot of the other pencils I use are quite hard actually. So it's really nice to have a type of pastel pencil that's going to be able to fill in the tooth of the card for me. So I'm just gonna fill in all of the dark areas first and then start to model out my tones. So you can see the difference between these two colors. This color here, the 770, looks almost purple. As I said, I believe that would be the Payne's Gray. And then the 760 actually looks like it must be the Lamp Black, but it's coming out kind of gray. So unless some of that other blacks are absolute, as I've said before, unless they are much more like charcoal, then I would personally be looking to get my black from a different range because this is very much a gray, not a black. So using the pencil on the side, I'm finding it's got really quite a nice coverage. I quite like it. I do tend to use my pastel pencils on the side quite a bit because I often do my underpaintings like this with the pencil, as opposed to with something like a pan pastel or with pastel blocks. I do work in a variety of ways, but especially on a portrait of this size, I would usually be using pencils to fill in the first stage. So I do like how they're handling, and I do know that the Carbothello range do have a good selection of colors, but so far, as I keep saying, the black just, it's not wowing me. But again, I might have just picked the wrong type of black. Of course, I have only got a small selection. 
I've got six of each pencil and I've tried to roughly match which ones I've got. So I've got an ivory or a warm white. I've got a white, I've got a black, um, I've got a Payne's gray, and then I've got two other grays, two lighter grays to help me um, with the highlights over the top. So it should be a fairly nice comparison to make at the very least if we ignore colour temperature, we have a similar variety of tones to be working with. So here I'm just now filling in the rest of the, the black to give myself some underpainting to work with now that I am happy with where the darkest darks are. And I've just pressed harder effectively for the darkest darks. I'm going to have to, as I said, use some Faber-Castell in a couple of areas just for the muted colour for the eye and also the inside of the ear. Now I can see quite a bit of colour elsewhere in this drawing and if this was a real pet portrait and I was doing it properly I would be adding in lots and lots of colours. So if you're watching this and thinking this isn't how you usually draw then no it's not how I usually draw but for a pencil review it should keep things much simpler. So this is the 182 for the inside of the eye. And then I'm gonna work with the 720, which is one of the grays. Now, I expected this gray to come out darker, but against the um, pastel matte, this gray is actually coming out really quite light, much lighter than I expected it to. So I'm gonna to have to do some clever mixing to make this work because I've got now too many light tones with the set of Carver Fellows. So I'm going over the top with my darker tones to give myself a slightly darker gray, but not quite as dark as my darkest darks on the page. Now, of course, the Carbothello range does have quite a lot of gray. So I'd like to think they do have some darker grays than this mid gray. Um, but being not totally familiar with them, I did have to go on how the pencils looked. And once again, I feel like the outside of the pencil is slightly misleading. Now, this is my light gray that I'm using, the 110. And actually, the amount of pastel it puts down is wonderful. I do really like that. It is actually something I struggle with a little bit with Faber-Castell range that I would normally use is when I have quite a lot of pastel down because the Faber-Castell range are a harder pencil, I can sometimes struggle to get the lighter tones uh, to show up. So it's one of the reasons that I'm starting to test more pastel pencils uh, a little bit more thoroughly is to give myself a broader range of pastels to be working with on a more regular basis. So I am pretty damn impressed with the white, I have to say. I like the white. That is something that I will definitely be buying more of and perhaps almost saying goodbye to my Faber Castell white, which I've started to fall out of love with recently, particularly on a, a cow portrait that I was working on for the membership. Really, really lovely tutorial, but I did end up recommending that people bought either a Caran d'Ache or a Stabilo Carbothello white to do it with um, because I needed something that was a little bit softer. So the pastel pencils are mixing really nicely from one into another. That is a bonus. But obviously I am struggling to get the intermediate tones now. I'm also not yet sure how I feel about them for fur because they're so soft. So obviously I haven't really started doing fur details yet, but I've just struggled with this section just here. So these two tones, this is the light grey, the 110, and then the white, the 100, which I do like that white. These are blending together beautifully. So, you know, I probably should have just got a few more uh, different greys to help me with these darker tones. But so far, I have to say that the lighter tones are impressing me more than the darker tones for the Karen, sorry, for the Carbothello, not the Karen Dash, for the Carbothello set. What I do like about this set as I'm working with it is it's happily filling in the tooth of the card really, really well. There's no graininess here and there's no gaps appearing. It's just filling it in really easily, which I think is a really good benefit because who wants a horrible grainy finish to their pet portrait? You really want the card to be properly filled in. Now I have used this before, this is their Ivory, the 105, and I did like using this pencil. Um, again, it's got a nice amount of coverage considering it's a light toned pencil, and often with the lighter tones it's harder to get a really nice coverage so that the tooth of the card is properly covered over because sometimes the weaker the tone and the weaker the color, the weaker the overall effect on the card and you kind of end up paying more to get a pencil like the Caran d'Ache that's going to cover it. But I have to say that the, the Carbothello 
the Carbothello range has done a really good job with the, the light tones here, which I'm using. I do enjoy using these. haven't used a lot of them before, but I will definitely be getting some more of these. It does feel a little bit grainy, I would say, under underhand. I have got, admittedly, quite a lot of pastel down now, so I suppose I would expect it to feel a little bit grainy, but potentially almost a little crumbly. But getting these details on top, I feel like they're becoming a little bit thick and sloppy for my liking. It depends how much detail you want, though because I am also getting quite a nice soft finish. So maybe it's a case of working in a slightly different style with the different materials. Now I have just broken that. I pressed, I mean, I pressed fairly hard, but I don't think I pressed so hard that I would have expected it to have broken perhaps. So maybe a little down tick there. So I'm just mixing in the ivory to get some of the warm tones. Obviously the ivory is too light really for down here, but then I'm mixing some of this mid gray um, on top of it. So, you know, I'm ending up with a kind of happy medium. I do actually quite like working with a reductive set sometimes just for the pure challenge of it and to force me to think outside the box a little bit more when I'm doing uh, my works of art instead of just lazily reaching for a pencil and um, thinking about different ways I can make that piece work. I think it's much more interesting. It definitely has progressed my drawing over the years because I've learned more about how tone and colour works by having to actually physically um, mix new tones, new colours or create the effect of a new colour simply by the juxtaposition of what it's next to. This portrait is coming together quite nicely, but I'm still not happy with the darks up here. They feel green and purple and they really shouldn't. I'm just going to fill in the air with the 169. It is not the perfect pencil for this section. Really, I should use several different pinks inside that ear, but again, this is about the, the pencils I'm testing, not about the supplementary pe pencils. So I'm just going to go over the top, blend that in. And I will just use the same pencils, of course, with the Caran d'Ache when I get to that. So that is a nice, quick Frenchy portrait with the Stabilo Carbothello. I have only spent about, I don't know, 40 or so minutes on this. So it really is, you know, just a quick tester. What I enjoyed about them, they blend together really nicely and the light tones show up well, but I wasn't impressed with the darker tones. Could have been potentially the pencils I picked, but that lamp black wasn't black in the way I wanted it to be at all. And I think when it comes to adding details on, you have to be fairly measured to make sure your pencil marks don't become too thick too easily. But that said, the lighter tones show up well. So if you do need a white that's going to show up on top of the thick underpainting, then the Carbothello pencils are a pretty good option. So let's have a look how this compares to the Caran d'Ache now. As I've said, the Caran d'Ache are significantly more expensive. So if you are starting out, I mean, I wouldn't suggest getting them if you're starting out because you could just end up a little bit too scared to use them, to be perfectly honest. I've been drawing with pastel pencils for, I don't know, maybe six or so years, maybe longer, I'm not really sure. And I've I've still not bought myself a set of these. They are just really expensive and I'm just worried about breaking them and it basically ruins the enjoyment of drawing for me. So straight away, this is a black, whereas I was having a problem with the Carbothello in that the black wasn't really a black at all. They were coming out as green and purple. So I'm quite happy with the intensity of that tone. I would say it's kind of similar in how it looks to the Faber-Castell, which, as I say, is the brand I would normally pick. The black isn't quite as soft as I was expecting it to be. It's not as soft as the Carbothello, but I would say the Carbothello underhand felt a little bit more chalky, whereas this, this feels slightly more buttery. So just as I did with the first portrait, I'm going to start off by heading around and filling in the dark areas. Now, these are both soft brands of pencil, so they are blunting quickly, but being that I draw with pastel pencil so much, I get quite adept at finding a vaguely sharp edge to use without having to stop and sharpen up my pencils every two seconds. But if you're just starting out, something like the Faber-Castell does stay sharper for longer. So it's got a nice coverage through the paper, just like the Stabilo Carbothello. It's covering the tooth of the card really quite nicely, but I would expect both brands to be able to do that because, as I've said, they're soft pencils. All right, so I'm going to change to using the pencil on the side because, as I said, that is, to be honest, how I like to use a pencil for an underpainting. Quite a nice coverage. I, I do really like the tone of this black. It is... It is black um, instead of green or purple or something else unknown. 
But as I've said before, I think that is quite similar to the Faber-Castell black. I've got one here, so you know what? Let's pop a bit down. They're very similar. I think the Faber-Castell black is ever so slightly more matte, but honestly, I can hardly tell. Okay, so I've just come across a hard nodule in this, which is a real shame. That's not really the kind of thing I would have expected from a pencil that costs £4.50. Didn't come across anything like that in the Carbothello. Obviously, I've only used a few, but I have used some outside of this as well, only a couple, and I've, I don't think I've actually ever had that problem with the Carbothello, in fairness. I've definitely had that problem with some tones of the Faber-Castell. So I actually don't think I like the thickness of the Caran d'Ache pencil that much. It means that when I need a sharp edge, I've, I've got to sharpen it because it is so blunt, because the pencil's so thick. Whereas when I work with the Carbothello, or indeed Faber-Castell, which are a similar thickness to each other, even when the pencil's technically blunted, because the pencil diameter isn't, isn't nearly as large as this, I can always find a sharp edge. This is just so thick that I think I'd need to sharpen up and potentially end up just wasting quite a lot of pastel by doing that. But that said, this is, you know, only a small drawing I'm working on and you, you might quite like the quality of it being thick for the way that you draw. So, then got my Payne's Grey, which I think, you know, is going to, yeah, is quite different. So, immediately there, there is a plus in terms of, I tried to order similar pencils, but the black and the Payne's Grey that I've ordered from the Creta, uh, sorry, the... <laughs> The Stabilo Carbothello were so similar and tonally, tonally were the same. One wasn't, I don't think, particularly much darker than the other, that it it's reduced the amount of pencils I've got, whereas this Payne's Grey is lighter than my black. My black is nice and dark with the Caran d'Ache pastel pencils, so this Payne's Grey from Caran d'Ache is therefore showing up lighter and giving me more range, I would argue. Of course, there are more greys in the Stabilo Carbothello set, and there were, as I've said, there were other blacks. There was certainly another black. I've probably got it up on the screen for you at the minute. So, so potentially, there could have been a greater range to have had in the dark tones, uh, but certainly with the black I ordered, it wasn't dark enough. So I feel like this Payne's Grey is actually working really nicely. It's coming out very soft, which I I do like actually. <laughs> I'm not used to working with soft pencils, but I am quite enjoying it. It's forced me to work in a different way. I think that's fair enough to say. I would be doing this portrait differently with my Faber-Castell set, undeniably. I mean, as I've said before, this is a really reductive set, so I know I can't get a perfect finish on any of this. Don't expect a perfect finish. And finally, dip into some of my lighter greys to try and finish this. So this is the grey that broke. It's the 003. Seems to be quite blue. I would imagine they've got cooler, uh, sorry, warmer greys, just like the uh, Stabilo Carbothello range have warm and cool greys, as do the Faber-Castell. It's really common. It's really useful. So I'm definitely struggling with how large these pencils are. Large and soft. I would actually argue it's making detail, proper detail work, if you're going to be really fine, it's making it quite difficult. I think that was actually easier with the Stabilo Carbothello. Yeah, I'm not happy with how the eye looks. Uh, but there is so much pastel down because these are so soft that I kind of want to leave it alone now. You really don't need to put very much pressure through the Caran d'Ache, I have to say, to get it to show up. It is a little bit of a different way of working for me because I'm used to putting different amounts of pressure through my pastel pencil in order to get a certain effect. So I wouldn't say it's exactly a negative or a positive, but it is definitely a different way of working. From what I've done so far with the Caran d'Ache, I feel like they are less suited to detail work, personally. Certainly on a smaller scale. I think if I was doing this on a really big scale, it would probably be a different story, but they are so soft and so chunky that getting fine details is certainly not... It doesn't feel like it's what they're made for. 
or it certainly doesn't feel like it would be as easy as it would with some other brands. So the Stabilo Carbothello, of course, very soft as well, but having that smaller diameter of pastel is a little bit easier to get um, details in. Okay, let's go in with this slightly lighter grey for this area of proper bright light. I mean, I much prefer the quality. It's undeniable, isn't it? The quality of how the Caran d'Ache look uh, with these darker tones. But as I've said already, I have used other pencils from Stabilo Carbothello and they had a beautiful uh, tonality and colour to them. So I feel like potentially the the black in particular has let them down, but maybe one of the other blacks, as I've said before, could have saved them. So the nose is another area where the size of this pencil is not very helpful. I think doing noses like this, which are fairly, they're a little bit squashed. I find them, they're, they're a little bit tricky because obviously there is less structure to them. So then if I've got a bigger pencil, it can make the whole experience a little bit more clumsy. So that nose has gone in fairly okay, really. Again, because these are blending together so beautifully, it does, it has made a really nice effect and the quality of these pencils in terms of the amount of uh, pigment in them, it's undeniable the way that these lighter tones are able to show up so pure and clean over the top. It's definitely a really strong suit of the Caran d'Ache by my mind and something that I do turn to them for. As I've said before, if I need a white to show up in a really difficult area, then I know that if I can't get a Caran d'Ache to do it, I'm just not going to be able to do it because the Caran d'Ache do produce such beautiful, high quality, light toned pencils. It is very useful to know that and to have a couple in stock. I often don't have a couple in stock because I use them very quickly because I quite like them and then fail to replace them and then come to need them and I haven't got one. So it's a bit of a reminder to myself to keep stocked up on these for those tricky occasions when you do need something to show up over the top of potentially, you know, a mistake or just an area that actually would look better lighter. So I'm going to try the warmer white. So compared to the Stabilo Carbothello, let's have a look. Yeah, I thought that was the case. The Stabilo is a little bit more yellow, quite a bit more yellow actually. It's not necessarily a negative or a positive of either brand. It's just something to note that obviously they do come out differently, but this feels much more like a warm white than an ivory to me, which for this specific situation is quite nice because it is more white than ivory. But of course there are situations where you need something that's a little bit more yellow, in which case I just have to mix this pencil with something else underneath it and just glaze the two of them together. It's not really a problem. So I'm now using the pure white. And again, the Caran d'Ache, it's just filling in the tooth of the card so easily. I'm not really getting a very grainy finish to this, despite the fact that it's a very light tone over a dark toned paper. So obviously again, for all of this section, if I was doing this portrait properly, I would be putting pinks underneath here because we can definitely see the warmth of her skin coming through. But of course, I'm more just testing these pencils than trying to produce a finished portrait. Um, I do have this portrait as a standalone tutorial. So a full length how to do it properly to get a really good effect and finish on it. And that is part of my pet portrait course, which is new to my channel at the time of releasing this YouTube video and really takes you through a variety of most popular breeds so that you can understand how to create pet portraits and become a pet portrait artist. So let's put in some of this darker skin. I'm not pressing too hard with this pencil as I go in because of course it puts down quite a lot of pastel and I do need lighter tones to be able to sit on top of this. So I'm just being a little bit cautious as I put it in. I don't want to muddy the tones underneath too much. So I'm really just using the ivory on top of here so that it does become a little bit warmer. Obviously, 
it doesn't really matter because again, I'm just testing the pencils out, but it would be nicer to get it just a touch warmer as we come down into these darker tones because we can really clearly see that on the photograph. Finally, just because I can't resist. The eyes are looking so flat without at least a little bit more lift in them. I'm just going to pop in a bit more of their iris. Of course, if you want to learn how to do eyes properly as opposed to not very well, as I've just demonstrated there, then do head over to the full course where I will show you exactly how to do dog's eyes in various different perspectives at various different angles, different breeds, so that you've really got all of your bases covered properly. So there we have two very quick French Bulldog pet portraits finished. So this one was done in the Stabilo Carbothello and this one was done in the Caran d'Ache. Now obviously you can see, see that the Stabilo Carbothello hasn't got the richness and the intensity of the darker tones as the Caran d'Ache does. As I've said this could be because I should have gone for one of their other blacks but overall even without just thinking about the type of black I have picked when we compare the dark tones on the Stabilo to those on the Caran d'Ache uh, they are a world apart. These in my opinion, have a little bit too much colour in them, whereas the Caran d'Ache are much more tonal and much richer. That said, when it came to the lighter tones, I was quite impressed with the Carbothello. Again, they're not as clean and as bright as the Caran d'Ache, but considering these pencils are £1.80, whereas these pencils at the time of recording go up to £4.50, that is a big difference for not a lot of difference in your lighter tones, especially in how they handled. Both pencil brands handled really nicely. I don't have a problem with either of them really in terms of a soft pastel pencil. I wouldn't use the Caran d'Ache particularly for small detailed drawings like this uh, size. As you can see, the size of the drawing is quite small. But if I was to be working on a pet portrait on like a 25 by 35 centimeter piece of board I would be quite happy to use the Caran d'Ache I think I could still get a good level of detail and not have to fight against the softness of the pencil the Carbothellos on the other hand they were actually a little bit easier to handle on a smaller scale I would still say because they're a soft pencil they would work better on a slightly larger scale but at the same time they worked well they're a really really good option for a budget pencil so if you're just starting out and the the Faber-Castell for example which is what I would normally use for my pet portraits. If they're out of your price range, then the Carbothello are a good option, I would say. The only thing I would do is I would get a different black, but you don't need to invest in the Caran d'Ache. You can just get a Faber-Castell black. I have a really small one here. And the black from the Faber-Castell is very similar to the Caran d'Ache. It's really dark, it's just not as soft. In effect, whenever it comes to choosing a pencil, a paint, a paintbrush, whatever it is, it's more about you than about the material itself. It's about how do you work and what kind of artwork do you want to be creating? If you're working on larger scale, then both of these pencils work supremely well. Because they're soft, they put down a great amount of pigment and because you're working on a large scale, you're not going to struggle against that soft pencil as much. If like me, you tend to work on a smaller scale day to day, then having a few of the harder pastel pencil brands in your mix is definitely going to help you. But I would suggest that you grab yourself a couple of these pencils and test them out yourself if you're looking to expand your range of pastel pencils. I hope you found this useful. If you want to see any more pastel pencil reviews, then do leave me a comment down below. And if you want to find out how to draw fur, how to draw a nose, then just keep watching because the next video coming up for you is how to draw a dog's nose in pastel pencils.